Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a recommendation algorithm similar to the one used by YouTube. In this video, we're going to be using Node.js to build an algorithm that can suggest relevant videos to a user based on their watch history. By the end of the video, you'll have a good understanding of how the recommendation algorithm works and how to build one using Node.js. So let's get started. So YouTube's recommendation algorithm works on lots of different features, but the main two key features are video performance and viewer personalization. So these are the two that we're going to mainly look at. And underneath you can see I've got a subset of different things, different keys that we're going to be looking at here. So for video performance, we're going to look at the average watch length, the average watch percentage, the average views, the average likes and the average dislikes. For the view of personalization, we're going to be looking into what channel categories this particular user is subscribed to. So not particularly just what channel, it's what the actual category of that channel is. Uh, what category the videos belong to that they've watched uh, also the video watch history we're going to look at the watch length the watch percentage whether they ignored a video whether they liked the video whether they disliked the video and whether they shared that video on social media so we're going to build an algorithm that looks at all this and we should end up with a graph that looks like this so user one based on these factors has watched this video has liked it and so on so we're going to give it different weights and those weights will then give us this particular number here for a recommendation on that particular video we will then also create another graph based on the video performance and it should look something like this uh, this will give us a score of the average watch length average watch percentage views likes and dislikes and calculate a value from zero to to five based on these values here. So we're gonna write those two algorithms and then what that will kick out, that should kick out a, a list of 10 videos for the user's recommendations view. So before diving into this any deeper, what we want to do is we want to initialize our NPM project. Uh, I'm also gonna zoom in uh, just so it's a bit more visible. So we want to open up a new terminal and we're gonna run NPM init. And this should create an uh, npm project for us. So I'm just going to call this yt-algo. Version 1, entry point will be index.js. And we can skip through the rest of these. Okay, so now we have our project initialized. Uh, that's if we want to import any um, npm libraries later on. But to start off with, as with any algorithm, data is key. Uh, we can't have an algorithm if we do not have any base data to run it from. So we're going to go through and start adding some data. We'll do this just by creating JSON files for this example. That will not be viable for large projects because the JSON files will get too large. Later on, want to look at creating a machine learning model for this. If you'd like to see how you can do this using machine learning model, please leave a comment below. Um, and I can also create a YouTube video on how to do that. So we're going to create a folder here now called data. This is where our data is going to live just to keep it separate. And we're also going to create a file called datagem.js. And this is the file that we're going to use to generate all of our data, um, all of our sample data. So the sample data objects we'll be having is video, users, viewer personalization, video performance, category, and channel. So we start off by creating the users. So the users will be an ID and a name. To get up and running, we're gonna need a few NPM libraries. So const fs equals require fs. This is so we can read and write to files. And then the next one we're gonna need is uuid. This will enable us to have this ID as a unique identifier rather than just an incrementing number. So to run that, we run const uuid equals require uuid and then we need dot v4 after this okay so now we need to have an empty user array uh, this is for us to store the users in temporarily before then passing them into the json file we don't want to keep reading and writing it into the json file when we can just do it all at once so let's create a function now to generate the actual users so we're doing a function generate users and we're going to have a for loop in here 
So 4 let i equals 0, i is less than 20, i plus plus. And then from here we're going to do users.push and we're going to push in the id and the name. So this UUID that's generated from here into the array. And once that's completed, we'll have a little if statement below it that says if i is equal to 19, then we want to run fs file sync and we're going to go to data slash users.json and we're going to stringify that information from the array and push that into the file. And then below this, we want to run the generate users function. So before we forget, let's run npm i uuid dash dash save to install the uuid node library and then we can run node datagen.js. So now we should see underneath our data folder here we have a users.json file and inside here we have all of our users that we've created, user 0, user 1 and they've all got a unique identifier all the way up to user 19. So now we know that works, let's do the same for the category schema because the category schema is pretty much the same as the user schema. So let's copy this down to here and we'll change each of these to category. So generate category and then, and then if we run this again should now have the category categories in here so category zero let's just double check we haven't doubled up on the data in here so now that we've generated the users and the categories let's generate the channels so we'll generate 10 channels for this let's just copy this category one down below it and let's change category now to channel And inside here, what we'll want to do is we'll want to pull one of these categories inside. So category will be equal to category math dot random. And then what we want is category length. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pull the ID through from there. So if we now run this, we should have our new channel JSON here where we have our ID our name and our category. So now that we've generated our categories and our channels, we can now generate our videos because they require categories and channels to be in there as well. So let's just copy this back down from here. Might as well use this as it's working. We'll change channel to be video. So let's copy that and replace all of these with video. Just to update this here. It's capital V, capital V, capital V in here. So we need to add, we have ID, let's get rid of name and call that title. We have category, duration, So duration we're going to have between 0 and 1000, this should be in seconds. We'll get rid of published for now, as this won't make a difference. And then we can get to the channel by doing the same as we did with the category. So we get the channel ID that way. So let's hit save and run this again. We should now have video.json, we have an ID, a title, a category, and also a duration there of set how many seconds it is and also the channel that it belongs to. So let's create a hundred different videos. So this will be a hundred and that'll be 99. Just wanna check that I've updated these above here. So 2019, 2019, 2019, okay. Right, with the videos, the categories, the channels and the users done, that leaves us with two, which is viewer personalization and video performance. 
So just thinking about it, we can scrap video performance on this particular one um, because we're going to be generating the video performance based on the viewer personalization. Uh, you'll see as I import this in. So the viewer personalization contains the user's ID and the video ID. And then the data for the actual video performance will come from the watch length, watch percentage, and whether it's been ignored, liked, disliked, shared, subscribed, or skipped. So we can generate all of that data for the video performance on the fly. So the viewer personalization function will be slightly different. Uh, we'll have the same array initialization here, the same function initialization, but rather than looping through um, an index of numbers, what we're going to do is we're actually going to loop through the users and the users will assign 10 different videos to each user. So that will give us uh, 200 data points that we can work with um, to start off with. Uh, we can increase that uh, if it doesn't yield any good results. But as we go through this and um, run the algorithm, it will build up anyway and get smarter and smarter and smarter. So let's generate this now. So we want to loop over the users. So for let i is equal to zero, i is less than users.length, i plus plus, for let j equals zero, j is less than 20, j plus plus. So what we're doing here, let's get rid of that L on the end there, what we're doing here is we're looping over the users and then inside each user we're looping over that doing an extra loop 20 times and then we're going to go viewer personalizations dot push and then what we want to do is we want to push this new uid the users id that we get from here a random video so a user could technically watch a video twice. Uh, we'll have to implement that inside the algorithm. The timestamp of when they watched it, we'll set that all to date now. Uh, this will change later, obviously, as we go through and add more, we'll get newer dates. The watch length will be a random number between one and a thousand watch percentage. So looking at this, I'm gonna change this ever so slightly. Um, what we're gonna have here is we're going to pull this out and actually set this as its own video here because we're going to need to reference this data correctly otherwise we're going to have lots of random information uh, looking at the way this is done um, so this will be just the video id uh, we want math.random times and then we want this to be video uh, number and then video dot length did we have that as video dot duration video dot duration times math dot random so the watch percentage will be the watch length watch length divided by the video duration and then we're going to multiply that by 100 Let's wrap this inside of bracket just in case it tries anything funny. So let's turn these into variables. Click save. These should do random numbers between zero and one. Let's run the code here. Run the data gen.js. Uh, we get an error. Cannot access video before initialization. Um, Ah, silly me. So video, right, so because I've called this variable the same as this one here, so we'll just change this to current video. Um, we'll update this now for here, for here and here. Hit save, rerun this. That should be generated. Here we go, viewer personalization.json. So this is all of the big lump of data that we're going to be using. So we have our true and false values for our likes, dislikes, ignored and shared and subscribed and skipped. 
So they're random. So that's the data generation done for this. I've made a few adjustments to the data gen.js file. I've incremented the numbers up for the generate user um, to 50. I've also increased, uh, decreased the categories to 10. I've kept the channels to 20, but I've increased the video generation to 2000. I've also included inside of the users, sorry, inside of the uh, generation viewer personalization, I've increased this to 500 and included a new category value in here to make it easier for us to filter our results uh, later on. So let's get into the script. Now this script was quite a large one, it was 151 lines. Uh, the next script, it's gonna be around 60 lines of code. Uh, so it would be a lot shorter, but it's a, a lot more complicated. Uh, so inside the JS file, index.js file here, the end results we're looking at is something like this. So if I remove this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import fs so we can read our files. So const fs equals require. And then that's going to just be fs. And um, for this one, we're going to also be using a lodash. So const underscore equals require lodash. Now to install lodash, we can run npm i lodash. And that will install it for us. I currently have it installed, so this won't go through. So to run through this just very quickly, what we want to do is create a mock user. And then we want to create some weights. And then we're going to filter the results. That's so we don't deal with every bit of data because the data is going to be massive. You'd realistically you'd do the filtering on an API or directly via a database. Uh, but for this example, we're just using a JSON file. So we're going to have to filter the results within the actual code. Then after this, this is where we're going to get the 10 results. But inside of this, what we'll be doing is we'll also be calculating the weights. And then we wrap all of that inside of a init. And that's where we're going to get our code from. So I'm going to start off by creating this init. To do that, we're going to do const init. And that's going to equal to an async. That's going to be an empty function. And then underneath, we're going to call init. So that won't actually do anything at the moment, uh, but what we'll do when we create the other functions up here, what we'll do is we'll import them into here to run. So let's start off by creating a mock user. So I've got some data here. I'll just paste it in and I'll explain what we're doing. So the mock user is going to have a user ID and we're going to have an array of categories. So rather than just having a single category, we're going to have an array of categories so we can select the best videos from multiple categories. And then underneath this, inside the weights, we're going to have an object, and that object is going to have a watch percentage. And that watch percentage is going to have a value of 10. So we're going to rate this on values of minus 10 to 10. You can do the same thing from 0 to 1. Um, I just decided to do minus 10 to 10, just so I don't have to deal with all of the multiplication and division of uh, decimal numbers and we have ignored and that's going to be equal to minus three now you can change these values to whatever you like liked it's going to be equal to nine disliked will be equal to minus nine just to give it a balance shared will be equal to five subscribed equal to 10 and skipped be equal to minus three so as i say you can update these as you see fit um just the positive ones will want to have a positive integer and the negative ones will not want to have a negative integer so that's done what we can do is we can filter the results create a new function and that function is going to be called filter viewer personalization that's going to take in an input of category And on this, we want to return a new promise. And 
and that promise will have a resolve and then you reject. So now we can start grabbing the data from the files. So we want fs.read file. And this is going to be the data file that we have. So that will be viewer personalization.json, this one here. And that's going to kick out a UTF-8. And then the callback for this function will return an error and the data. So then we want to tell it if there's an error, we want to reject with an error. And then the error that we get from here. But if everything's okay, what we want to do is we want to pass the JSON. So we'll say all, and then we'll have the viewer personalization. I'll just copy this out because it saves typing every time. And that's going to be equal to json.pass, and then we're passing the data. This allows us to use the data. And then what we want to do is we want to filter this data now. So we want the filtered data, and that will be equal to all viewer data all viewer personalization dot filter inside the filter we want to loop through the records so this counts as a single record here in the filter and we want to check that the category that we have here includes the viewer personalization dot category So what that's going to do is that's going to check every category that we've got in our list up here and then that's going to pass it back if this value is included within that category list. So once that's done we can now resolve and then we can pass back the filtered data. So we can check this works by going down to our initialization we can run const filtered data is equal to weight and then filter data viewer personalization and then pass in the mock user dot category and then we can console.log the filter data inside the terminal at the bottom we can run node dot and there we go we can see that we have the filter data in here and just to prove that is filtered data we can go into the viewer personalization file. We can see that there are 25,000 results. And this is only passing back uh, 4,600, I believe, after this bit's been added on, or maybe 4,550. So the next bit of code I think would be sensible to write would be the calculate weights function. There's um, quite a bit of code that's going into this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the code i've written in the previous test and paste it in and then what i'll do is i'll run through it and tell exactly what's happening so what this max weight constant here is doing it's getting the maximum number inside of our weights here so it'll be 10 here or this 10 here we can include increase this to 100 we can increase that to 20 and it'll take this one uh, whichever one it's going to take is the highest because what we want to do and you'll see in this next calculate weight function is we're actually going to be dividing by this max weight so it sort of normalizes the data for us so inside the calculate weight function what i'm doing i'm creating a constant of these variables here and these are going to come from the user data we have passed through here this is to limit the amount of data we're actually passing through and then the weight is going to be calculated so this is this mathematical equation here we're going to have if the weight watch percentage is greater than zero we're going to say weights dot watch percentage is divided by watch percentage otherwise return zero so if someone didn't watch a video or it's set to, set to zero it will return zero if we didn't have this in here it would cause issues and then for the next set of values the ignored liked disliked shared subscribed and skipped uh, we're following the same pattern so for example if ignored is true we're going to then take the weights.ignored and divide that by the max weight. So that should give us this ignored minus 3 divided by this 10 here. Otherwise return 0. 
and we do the same for the liked, disliked, shared, subscribed and skipped. So then what we do is we convert all of this then into a percentage and then return that back. So this calculate weights will become apparent in the get the top 10 videos. So I'll write the get top 10 videos up here. So this is going to be a const get top 10 videos. And that's going to be equal to a new function with date that takes some data. And this is where we're going to be mainly using Lodash for this. What we want to do is we want to return Lodash.chain. That's going to take in the data. Then we want to map this data. And each part of the data is going to be called item. And we want to map that to item.video ID. And this is where we use our calculate the weight. So calculation, calculate weight, and we pass through the item. Oops, I've got a typo here, item.video ID. Next thing we want to do is we want to group the items because currently it's going to have all of the items in their own part of the array. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that every ID is then collated into a single item. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add all the values of those together and then average those values out based on the amount of items that are in that array. So the group by is going to have taken the item. What we want to do is we want to group by the item and the zeroth part of the array. So this particular part of the array is the ID value. So for example, this ID value here, but for the video. So once we group those, what we want to do is we want to now reduce this down uh, so we can use the map. So that will take in the items. And we want to get the total weights. So all of those items added together. So const total weights. That will be equal to low dash dot sum, sum by, and we're taking the items and loop through the item and return the item at the first point in the array. So the zero nth part of the array is the ID. The first nth part of the array is the actual weight. So then what we want to do here is we want to average those values out. So const average weight is equal to the total weights. And we can divide that by item dot length. And then we can return an object. So we want to return the ID, which is going to be items zero, zero, and the score, which will be the average weight we have above. So if we run this, uh, we change the filter here to get top 10 videos. And that will take in the filtered results, filtered data. Let me just add a value onto the end of here. Getting an error here because I haven't got an S on the end of this. On line 42, it's the items.length because obviously we're referencing the entire array. So as you can see here, we've got all of our values they're all collated and we've got these score values here uh, but currently they're just randomly mixed um, so you can see we've got some higher numbers some lower numbers as we go through so there's 20 that's the highest one at the moment we've seen so now let's sort those if i get rid of this value here we'll put that back in, in a second what we want to do is we want to sort those by score so we can do sort by score so sort by score and that should now sort those out um, but it will do it uh, from smallest to largest so we need to now reverse that and then we just want to return 10 so we take 10 from there and then as before we can kick out the value so if we now run this inside of here we can see that we get the top 10 so the top very top one is 53 percent likely the person will like it based on other people's preferences. And then you see the next one is 28, 27, 25. So if I now take this one out of the array, 
we should be able to see different results. Okay, so we can see that the 53% is still at the top, so it's 53, 28, 27, 25, 53, 28, 27, 25 is missing because it's in a different category. Then we have our 21. The more categories we add to this, the more viewer information we get, uh, the better the results will be. Now, obviously, this is mock data, so if we have a look at the viewer personalization data uh, when we generated it, and we had trues and false randomly put into places whether someone subscribed or not um, so ignored true likes true so that obviously that can't be correct um, but if you have real data here and um, you should get some really good results so you can technically take this further if you wanted to uh, you could see which um, channel for example has a particular category so let's say for example this category here we were looking at and you could return relevant channels based on the category that person's looking at as well as well as just relevant videos if you'd like to see a video on how to do that I'd leave a comment below all of the code written here today will also go into a git repo the git repo is in the description if you found this video useful uh, please subscribe also if you want to support the channel check out the patreon link also check out this video on the screen now to learn more about JavaScript. Thank you for watching.